Welcome to another episode, Impossible to Fail. Let's go. We got an awesome guest today, and I was recently able to appear on his podcast talking about Mr. Michael Weaver of the Weaver Sales Academy. Michael, welcome, brother. Hey, thanks, man. What's going on? Dude, I'm so happy to have you here. I had a great time on your show last month with you and Courtney, your wife. So Michael and Courtney, uh, they are uh, insurance wizards, all right? They, uh, they were insurance agents primarily for many years and just built a crushing career and kind of very similar to the path I followed with real estate where I really, my passion always lied in keep, uh, teaching and coaching. You and Courtney followed the same path and now you have an incredible sales academy where you teach insurance agents how to build their career to just thrive, to crush it, to create the life in the, uh, that they envision for themselves. And I know that's really where your space is. And just like uh, my wife and I did before we had our, our kid, um, you work together which is yep. a very interesting dynamic. So I want to hit all that, but uh, why don't you just, um, you know, tell the, tell the crew a little bit about you and your business and then we'll, we'll dive into the journey. Yeah, absolutely. And, and like I, we were catching up before the, the podcast got started, I wish Courtney was here today. We're just going through, we're actually going through IVF and she is, uh, she's, she's out today. So just me, but Weaver Sells Academy. So she, my, my wife is Courtney Weaver um, and she's a CEO. I'm the president. And yeah, we're a sales training and coaching organization for insurance professionals. So uh, we, we created this business about five years ago um, in 2018. And, and the reason for it was, is we had talked to 453 agents the previous six months. Um, and we had determined, because we were living the, what what we thought was we were blessed, man. Like we were able to travel three months a year. The the culture was great. The team was running it. We were making good money. And um, throughout all these conversations, that's not how it was. Like that's just not how it is. And so I, I felt like, dang, we got to do something. Um, like people aren't making money. They feel like this. They signed up for one thing. They don't know how to do it. They're they don't have processes and systems. Their teams don't know how to sell. Yeah. And so that's how Weaver Sales Academy was originally built. And fast forward now, five years later, uh, we've helped out over ten thousand insurance professionals. Currently, help forty four hundred plus across the country currently because um, we gave up. Uh, we gave up the insurance agency back in 2022, along with mm -hmm. two of our other sales organizations to go full time with this. So it's been, it's been fantastic, man. Obviously have learned a ton of learning <laughs> lessons along the way. Um, but it's been, it's been a hell of a lot of fun and we're enjoying it. That's amazing. I mean, those are the amount of people that you're helping is just awesome. It's just awesome. And that's really, I think, I think we're all obligated when we get to a certain level of knowledge to share that knowledge. You know, and that's really inspiring that you're doing that because just like in insurance and in my world in real estate, when you get your license, you know, you don't learn how to build a career. You don't learn how to make money. You don't learn how to generate leads. You don't learn how to do the transaction or nurture. Uh, and it, I, I would imagine it's very similar in, in insurance. Is that right? Man, it's, it's the exact same way. And last, mm -hmm. last month when you were on our podcast, you're like, yeah, we, you offer the blueprint to success. Mm -hmm. Like the, and that's exactly what we do at Weaver Sales Academy. We have mm -hmm. something, I think we actually very offer very, very similar products, but we're the only organization I know of that have a, has a curriculum style training to where you, an agency owner can plug in or a producer can plug in yep. and you can learn everything from the prospecting to how the sales conversation goes to yep. retention strategies to mar I mean everything. And, and that's, that's what it's about. Cause if we can help people be better at what they do, more confident, elevate an entire industry, not only does that do, not only is that going to elevate an industry, but that's going to be a better overall customer experience, yep. which, which is what it's all about. Yeah, that's absolutely right. It is about the experience. I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of insurance agents, I'm sure that can provide a result, just mm -hmm. like a lot of realtors can provide a result, but it's about the experience that you provide that keeps them because unlike, unlike real estate, literally everybody needs what you have to offer, right? <laughs> Every single person you talk to, whereas me, it's like, it's just sifting for gold, needles in a haystack. Once every three to seven years, statistically, someone's going to need my service, but people always need your services. And I would imagine that especially the retention, you know, the providing the experience is so essential for the longevity of your, your clients. 
Absolutely. So it's, it's taking a prospect, turning them into a customer and, uh, and not the sell doesn't stop there. That's where the sell really starts. Cause how can you turn a customer into a customer for life? And, and then it's winning the business. It's, it's differentiating yourself. Um, because in, in this business, even though people need it, a lot of folks within the industry are just transactional. Like yeah. let, let's just focus on price. If we don't save you money, move on. And that's the exact opposite of what I teach. Like I want you to be valued based, taking price out of the equation, doing the right thing for the customer, having a good, great conversation with them, figuring out the problems and then solving their problem because that's how you're going to create a customer for life. Man, you hit the nail on the head, dude. Money is exchanged when problems are solved. That's you're right. You're solving the problem. When, when people want to maybe change up their insurance, it's because there's a problem with the other one that they're trying to solve. They don't just say, maybe I'll just switch insurance, right? Maybe it's too expensive. Maybe there's some, but there's something going on. Just like people don't move to buy or sell a house. They're trying to solve a problem and buying or selling is the way that they're going to solve that problem. So we need to, we need to figure that out for them. Talk, tell us about the, the beginning, how this started. Cause I love for my listeners to hear about the journey and realize that entrepreneurship is possible with the right mindset and the right level of action. Because I would imagine, you know, it, it's that you didn't just start your Weaver Sales Academy and the next day had thousands of of customers, right? I mean, how did this all how did this all start from? I mean, take us back to the beginning. Like, what was it like just cutting your teeth, getting your own business up and running before you got into coaching? Yeah, 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 yeah. So let's take you all the way back to, uh, I mean, that'd have been when I actually had to go and get an internship. All right. So I originally went to college for a law degree. And so the summer before my, actually it was um, spring break before my senior year, uh, I went out and I started knocking on banks doors. I started knocking on insurance agents doors. I started knocking on law firms mm. and, uh, every law firm and bank I went into, it was like a funeral home. It's like, I do not want to spend my summer here. This is crazy. Right. So <laughs> in most, in, in most insurance offices too. All right. Um, but I did stumble across one insurance office that was young. It seemed like they had a good upbeat culture. I was like, okay, I could foresee being able to like do this this summer. So mm -hmm got an interview and he said, Hey, come back when you, when you graduate. I was like, Oh, that that's the problem. I, I need this to graduate. Okay. <laughs> so, um, so anyways, I, I went back the next day, even though he told me no. And I'm like, I, I showed up at 9 AM and I was like, look, I'm going to show up here every single day until you give me a job. Like I, I need it. I like it. Like I'll, I'll do good. I'll, I, I promise you, if you give me a shot, it'll be worth it. And of course, as you know, like if anybody's going to be that persistent, you're going to hire. I'm like, I didn't know that back then, but now as an, as a agent, as a business owner, I'm like, if you're that persistent, I'm going to give you a shot. He did. And, uh, I, I fell in love with insurance, ditched the law firm career, uh, graduated from college and, uh, yeah, the rest is kind of history. So I, I worked as a producer for an agent for about two and a half years learning the business. Um, and then my wife and I opened up our insurance brokerage, um, uh, when would that have been? April of 14. So February though, we got married. And so we were broke, only had five grand to our name, probably mm -hmm. should have never been given the agency <laughs> opportunity. Um, but it, it, so we didn't have any money for marketing. We didn't have the credit, like banks wouldn't bet on us. They wouldn't give us lines of credits. And so, um, we went in and just pounded pavement, man. We, we were a cold calling office. So we'd make anywhere between, I personally would make about 300 calls a day, every yeah. single day. Um, me and her worked from together from day one. Mm -hmm. Uh, we, we loved it. And that's kind of where our love for working together kind of started. So she gave up her, her career. We went all in on the agency. We had a couple team members, um, that, that started with us from day one and we just went in and did what we had to do. Got super involved in the community, heavy social media, everything mm -hmm. free that we could do. We were doing yeah. social media presence. Um, we invested in a, a course to figure out SEO, uh, got heavily involved in the community and just smashed the phone. And, uh, yeah, out of 20,000 agents that first year, we were top, a top 100 agency in the company in a town, in a town of 8,000 people. And, uh, we just never let off the gas pedal. And, but at the same time, it was not easy. All right. Um, lots of sacrifice, lots of long hours, lots of turnover, figuring out how to actually lead people. Like you can be a great salesperson, but if you're, if you can't figure out how to lead and build a culture, like you're going to struggle. And, yep. and that was something as a 25 year old, I really struggled with like, um, I could sell, I can teach people how to sell, but I had a problem with managing and, and really I'd pour into people, but the management piece was just not great. Like I, I was terrible at it. 
Yeah. It's really interesting that, that because a lot of people try to do what you did and, and it doesn't work. We see it in industries all the time where someone has a skill set and they say, all right, now I'm going to run a business doing this thing. And being the owner of the business is, is a lot different than being a specialist in the business. And uh, have you read the book, uh, the, the E-Myth by Michael Gerber? Yep, great Love book. Love that book. So you know where I'm going with this, right? That, that most businesses are not started by entrepreneurs. They're started by technicians or specialists. And he, they have what he calls an entrepreneurial seizure, <laughs> where they decide they want to start a business. That happened to me when I started my first business. I was a music teacher. I started a, a music composition and publishing business. I didn't know anything about running a business, which is why it took so long to launch, which it did. So by the time I started my second business and my third business, I was like, all right, now I know <laughs> what I actually need to do. I need to approach this like a business. And you actually took the time to realize where your weaknesses were and improve them like your leadership, like your culture, because there's no way your sales academy would be as, as successful as it is now if you didn't establish a type of culture. So what, what specifically did you struggle with when you were starting to transition from, uh, l let's say a, you know, your own produ being a producer to leading mm -hmm. other people, not just teaching them how to sell, but leading them. Yeah, it's a really great question. So, um, I, I think dedicating the time. All right. Cause if you're a true leader and I, I feel like I've been a good leader, but the management piece I was terrible at like mm -hmm. H like HR, like, um, making sure all like we had good sell systems, but from a management system standpoint, we were terrible. Yeah. Um, and that's probably why we went through so many people in the beginning. Like we didn't have a handbook. We didn't have, I mean, we had one, but we didn't use it. Like we didn't enforce like, okay, you, you want to take a day off? Yeah, that's fine. Like whatever. Like, um, we didn't have paperwork when we wrote people up. And so all this stuff, and it came back to bite us in the ass because of work comp, like all kinds of claims. Mm. Okay. When somebody would like, just not good. And so that was things we had to learn the hard way and then figure out. And so by investing in hiring coaches to help us, okay, is really what changes the game. Like we could sell and we can motivate and lead again. Like I would, I will pour into my team and, but back then I was pouring into them, but it may not have been in the right manner, if that makes sense. Like mm -hmm. you can motivate people all day long, but if you don't give them structure on how to be successful and have the tools and processes in place, it's like you're running around in a circle, like a chicken with your head cut off, man. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so the, the key word I heard there was you, you hired coaches. Oh yeah. You hired people to help you learn how to be good leaders. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, right. Right. And, and the way if you're listening to this, I encourage you to check out the video at robstein.tv because Michael's face was like, well, yeah, of, of course. Like, obvi obviously, that's what I did. And I mean, it, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over. And in the a, a shortcut to success is figuring out folks that have been successful, not only them been successful, because there is a difference between a mentor, a trainer and a coach. Mm -hmm. um, I really believe that like, it's just not how they've been successful, but how have they helped others yeah. be successful? Yeah. Um, and that's really what we were looking for. Like, um, and, and that's really, and that's what we did. I mean, I'm a huge proponent, obviously, I'm a coach now. And, and so, but I walk the walk. I have, we have three coaches ourselves today. Like every yeah. year we invest more and more into coaches because that's investing into ourselves. And that's the best investment you will ever make in your life is into yourself because it's the one thing no one can ever take away from you. Absolutely. Right. And it is an investment in yourself because not only are you bettering your, your business, your life, you're then enabling other people to do the same. It always, not, not only, is coaching free. You actually get paid to hire coaches because when you implement oh. what they teach you, if you actually implement it, you're going to go out and make way more money, have way more quality of life. I learned that when I first hired my first high ticket real estate coach and I was all excited. I said, what does it cost? He's like 1500 bucks a month. And I was like, Holy smokes. I was, I'd never spent that. I mean, now I'd be like, yeah, of course, like that makes total sense. But at the time I was like, man, that that's just, Crazy, but I made an additional quarter million dollars that year from the previous year implementing what he taught me. So that ROI was like, 
<laughs> way over what was it like a 18 times ROI or something like well, yeah you you, on, you on took coaching. Eight, <laughs> you took 18 grand and turned it into two a court like and that's any good coach yes like any good and here's the thing though is it takes it takes you as well it takes me as well like you can have the best coach with the best ideas but if you don't take action yeah or you're not willing to change then that's a waste yeah. of money. You like, got to be coachable. You have to right. be coachable. When I interview new agents to coach um, or other businesses, I had a uh, great call with um, a couple mortgage companies this morning that I coach. And same thing, you, you got to be coachable, right? If you would imagine, for some reason in business, there's like this disconnect. Like if you were to imagine, let's say, um, a basketball coach, right? One of the best basketball coaches in the world. And you get some player that doesn't want to practice. They don't want to learn from the coach. They're like, I play basketball my way. I don't listen to anyone. I'm not going to listen to the coach. Any Anyone, athlete or not, would be like, well, that's not a team player. He's never going to get far, right? The coach can't make the athlete want to practice. The coach can't make the athlete want to work hard. The coach teaches you the skills, and then you implement them. I can't, you can't teach desire. We can't teach want. We can't. We can't teach work ethic. If someone has those foundations, we can mold it. We can shape it. We can teach them how to utilize the incredible energy they have and give them direction. But if someone doesn't want to be held accountable and isn't coachable, like that's not the coach's job to, to, to help you find your desire and motivation. It's to take the insane amounts of desire and motivation that you have and, and show you where to put it. Yep, 100%. I mean, it's... And there's no secret sauce or magic bullet either. Like, and I think a lot of people are looking for that. And it's like, there is no such thing. Like you got to go in, you got to do the work. You got to, yeah. because you got to go through the hard shit. Um, you got to go through the journey to get to the destination. You have yeah. to become the person it takes to get to where you want to go. So you can accomplish that goal. It just doesn't happen overnight. Like it's a process. Yep. Yep. It man, it, it so is. And I was actually having this conversation with Katie, uh, my wife, the other day. You know, it's and, and we, you and I say these things all the time. Yet, let me ask, like, full transparency: where you are now, your your sales academy is booming. I'm sure you're going through new levels. Even today, with all the success you have, do you ever have a point where you're taking on like a new venture, and you, and you're going through that? You're like, oh, is this going to work? What am I doing? Dude, you I'm have a hard I'm day. It. You're we like. Are yeah right we're we're in it right now man like it's yeah. the academy is blowing up we're we're blessed but going from and we had the insurance experience which was a brick and mortar um and then we had direct sales experience where courtney was a top 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 one percent out of the top one percent producer mm -hmm. so we had that experience we had a fitness company that we were top one percent producers there and then we had an seo company that was a multiple mm -hmm. six-figure company but this this adventure, when we gave all that up and went full time on this, managing all remote people, um, building an entirely new network, mm -hmm. what you said, leveling up this past 12 to 18 months has by far been the toughest in our careers yeah. um, from a learning standpoint fear standpoint, mm -hmm. like questioning, like, holy shit, is this ever <laughs> like we're doing, we're doing the work, we're doing yeah. the work and we're yeah. growing, but man, the projection, like, dang, like it's been so, I don't want to say hard, but it's, it has not been easy. Like yeah. even where we're at today. And so, yes, I would, yes, we're in it right yeah. now just yeah, to be man, transparent. Yeah. And it's, you, we just have so much in common. I don't say I can't say that with all my guests, but we really do. I'm, I'm in a very similar season with my sales course, Earth to Orbit. We've been released for about five months now. We've had hundreds of agents that are having life changing results, but we're scaling. I'm starting to partner with real estate schools to engage new agents in my coursework, other teams, companies that are private labeling having big meetings with big players in an effort to really, really grow. And that's brought a whole new set. And it, it's a similar process where it's been years in development, hundreds of thousands of dollars to develop it. And there are so many great things going on. And at the same time, there are so many things we're trying to do. And so Katie and I had a little date the other day. Uh, my mom came over, watched the baby, and we went to like lunch and a movie. And I was just kind of stressed out. You know, I'm sure the same thing with Courtney, right? Our wives, like there are therapists, right? In addition <laughs> to our business partners. And... She could just, you know, see it on my face. I'm just like stressing a little bit. And, you know, you and I talk all the time, Michael, about uh, the blueprint, 
you got to have the blueprint. And that is the shortcut to success. You hire someone yep. that's done, right? I have, you know, three coaches right now as well, just like you do. Um, and two of them are in the business space. And, you know, one of them is like my coach on speaking, coaching, writing, sales courses, like mimicking his stuff. I have another coach in the marketing, funnels, all that stuff. And so I'm doing exactly what they say as fast as possible. So I'm following the blueprint, but following the blueprint still doesn't mean it's going to be easy. It just means you're <laughs> going to get there faster than if you didn't have the blueprint and you can avoid unnecessary mistakes. But there's still stress and fear and doubt and, and all of that. And, and I was just going through some of it and she was like, this is part of the blueprint. It's just the shitty part of the blueprint. Like it's yep. the brown part of the blueprint. Like it's just part of it. And anyone that has ever achieved massive levels of success has gone through this. You can achieve massive levels of success without going through that. And I knew that. And I talk about it all the time that it's a roller coaster and you can't get there without, you know, learning and going through the ups and downs. But it was just the way she said it was incredible. Like, this is part of the blueprint. You know, don't resent it. Like, it's just part of it. You're three feet from gold. But the thing is, you don't know when you're, when you're three feet from gold, right? I remember when I woke up, the, the, or not when I woke up, I remember the, the first day, it took me, you know, seven months to get paid as an agent when I first got my license many years ago. And so for the first six months when I had no clients and we were just working every day and wondering, like, did we make a mistake moving halfway across the country and quitting your job and doing all this stuff? And, 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 I, and my first client had, had ghosted me for six weeks after we met. Follow up, nothing, and, and I'm just, you know, just stressing out. And then all of a sudden, after six weeks of no contact, she sh shoots me a text message one night and says, hey, Rob, you've been busy. We're ready for you and Katie to come over, help us sell this house, buy a new one. And the next month, I got 30 grand in commissions from that person. It's not like when I woke up that morning, I knew, oh, it's going to happen today. And she's going to get back to me today, right? Like you just, <laughs> you just don't know. But, but you have to follow the blueprint and have faith in the person you've engaged with and in yourself that you're going to do the work and when you're when you're accomplishing something you've never done before you can't necessarily have confidence because i think confidence is a result of experience in the exact thing you're trying to do but if you're but but you can have faith in yourself and i think that's your best guarantee the guarantee is you and your work ethic that you will not stop and you will be will be relentless in your pursuit of following the blueprint from from the coach from whoever you got it from man you said the word faith all right. I think faith is something that's very undervalued mm. and something that's very important. So not only the, like you have to have almost blind faith that mm. your, that your willingness to give up everything and go in on your dream, as long as faith is backed by action. Yeah. It like, but faith is, faith is hard though. Like, I mean, we just had, we just had the best year financially that we've ever, ever had and i can tell you and, but it was like it was almost like i forgot my our why like mm -hmm. great we had the best financial year we've ever had but then the fear of everything because i grew up in a small town blue collar workers and like i was always taught and this is something i'm personally going through right now like money doesn't come easy you have to sacrifice mm. and we made we hit this big goal and all of a sudden i was hit with like all of a sudden these these weird fears of like losing it all <laughs> started to coming upon me and in mm. this negative money talk and negative mo money mindsets and i'm like what is going on? Yeah. So like the last three to six months, I've been going through that journey myself. And it's just like, do I even deserve this? Like, mm. is it all going to go away tomorrow? <laughs> so it's keeping in me telling you all this or sharing. It's also making sure that you're constantly keeping your true why, your vision, your purpose and visiting that at least monthly. Like, why are you doing what you're doing? What, what, why are you following the blueprint? What do you want out of life? Man, that is so true. It's so it's so easy to get caught up in the destination and the goal, the finish line. You're chasing something, you have a task, whether that's um, building the business to X amount of people, a certain amount of money. Sometimes it's just more, more, more money, and you don't even know what the amount is. And then you don't even, if you don't know what the amount is, how do you know when you have enough? Like, how do you know when you've got yep. there? And 
I, I can relate somewhat. I didn't necessarily grow up in a small town, but money was very, very, very tight growing up. And we had, you know, blessed with a very loving family, super tight with my parents still to this day. And, and, but my earliest memories are like of my dad, like I can remember him just being real stressed about money. And I can remember being like from like single digits, age eight, nine years old. Like I will never let my family go through this type of stress. And it's still something I deal with. And so I have to really make sure I have my spreadsheets and know exactly what my break even number is, what my freedom number is, how much money do I need to have the quality of life we want. So at least I know when we have enough, otherwise it's just more, 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 or, right? Yep. Like I know for sure right now my out, like I need to net $27,000 a month to break even right now. Statistically we've been surpassed that, easily yep. but it, but it's still like once we get there anything on top of that is gravy right now <laughs> right like cool but otherwise with without without like you said knowing your why it's really easy to lose sight of 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 why are we doing this and and before you know it you can have years go by where you haven't examined your why and you're feeling so burnt out and almost resentful sometimes of your own thing that you're doing. And you're like, why am I doing this? But you haven't really thought about that in a long time. Well, man, and it's, and again, I'm on a journey this year. So we've, we've had three years of like really intentional investing in not only our professional lives, but our personal lives. Mm -hmm. And, and just here recently, January of this year, like I tied like my work ethic and the sacrifices I've made. I mean, I'm lucky that me and court, I think I may have told you this on the last podcast. Like I'm lucky that Courtney and I are even together today. Like when I was 22, met her on, took her out on the first date. I said, Hey, if we move forward in this relationship, you are only going to see me on Sundays. Like I work from seven o'clock to eight o'clock at night, every Saturday. And she was down with it. She's like, like the biggest support system in the world. But mm -hmm. here recently, like I've tied everything I've, I've, I've been working since I've been third. So it's very similar to you, very 13. And I've tied everything to worth. Like I tied working to my worthiness. Mm. That is not a recipe for success. That's right. a recipe for disaster because nothing will ever be good enough. And so that's something I'm going through right now is how do you separate that? How do you get more out of life, more freedom, more time, more money, help more people than ever, but not tying your, so really figuring out like what's actually important. What's actually your goals, not what's the goals that people are telling you you should have, mm -hmm. not what's the level of success people are. What is, what do you actually want out of life? And that's what, that's what we're on this year, man. Like we're both like super intentional with that. And, yeah. and, and it all ties together though. We want to help as many people as possible. We want to, we want to make a lot more money and we want to work less. Like who doesn't want to do that? Like help yeah. more money, money, but have more life because right. life, life is short. Yeah. And, and really that's, that's the beauty of getting into, you know, the coaching space and an avenue I found is number one, I can serve more people, which is, I believe yep. my purpose on this earth to use the talents I've been blessed with in, in education and teaching and motivating and speaking to help people. But you get to a point where there's only so much time for money and you must create leverage. And if that's not through coaching, maybe you're still in sales. Maybe you're a real estate agent, maybe you're an insurance person and you just hire a couple assistants so that you can leverage your time and create more time freedom. But at a certain point in every entrepreneur's journey, regardless of industry, you, especially for guys like you and I that like bootstrapped our way up, right? Like I didn't, you know, the whole phrase, it takes money to make money. I don't think that's true always. I think it's true to a certain extent. I think you, I, I don't think it takes money to make money initially. I think you can bootstrap your way to a certain point and, and in most industries, probably to a comfortable life. Yep. But at some point, if you want to get to the next level, if you want to thrive, if you want, because when people become entrepreneurs, they don't do it to work 80 hours a week forever. They do it because they imagine a certain lifestyle. We imagine a certain lifestyle for ourselves of not completely passive income, but relatively passive income. You dip in, you dip out, you have people in places you can go on vacation for a few weeks and come back and the thing's not going to fall apart, right? It exists without you. That's what people think of when they think entrepreneurship. But at a certain point, it does take money to get to the next level. You do in yep. order to scale and create leverage. Now that money might be hiring a few additional people, 
which will still allow you to make more money because when you hire them to take over certain responsibilities, then you can focus on doing more things and scaling and, 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 and making more money. But at a certain point, time for money only gets so far. And that's when you really need to examine Again, like, what are you going for? What are you going after? Why are you doing this? Are you doing this because you love to work? Pr probably that's part of it, but it's not the main reason. It's probably because you want control and time. And at that point, you need to be able to flex. And like you said, hire, like we do hire a coach to show you how to do that. And you chose coaching. You chose coaching in, in, in your sales academy. Absolutely. Yeah, man. So, and, and you're spot on with you're spot on with this. So this is something Courtney and I've been talking about here recently. Like it doesn't take, you can bootstrap your way to a really nice career, really nice living. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's when it's that next, like personally, I think it's the 800 to a million mark yes. is when it starts to take money to get to that eight figure business versus the seven figure business. I truly yeah. believe that like we, yeah. and we're, I'm a living testament of it. Like we, I, we've made, we've made total 50 grand a year living in low income housing, like a 300 square foot foot apartment and then we started the the business to where we were making six figures and then we started making multiple six figures and then recently we made seven figures and it's like there's really not that big of a difference in my opinion between like that 450 and 700 mark yeah um but the difference is is you can use your money to buy time and yes. time is the most valuable thing in the world yes yes you, and you can't get it back and the beauty of it is at some point you have to make a decision. More time or more money. And if yep. you do it right, you can have time and money. That's right. You can, do, <laughs> you, can definitely, you can definitely do both. And I was listening to, a, to another podcast recently, and, um, uh, and, and they were talking about the fact that, especially if you have this ingrained in you, it's not necessarily noble to grind yourself down to like a nub and and, and at, at a certain point yes you do have to be in the trenches and grind it out but at a certain point it's okay and a good thing to realize you can have your time back and scale and make more money and it's okay to go after what you want like that yep. and that's where like you said you really got to look examine what do you want and why and you have to make sure you're surrounding yourself with the right people that can support that because the entrepreneurial journey can be very lonely. And if you're talking to a neighbor or a friend that is not in that world, they're going to say, dude, you don't need all this. You don't need all that. And it's like, well, according to who? <laughs> right? Like, like, like you don't need this house either. You, you, you know, when K Katie and I went to, uh, have you ever been to uh, Manitou Springs next to Colorado Springs? We haven't. So Colorado Springs, obviously every, everyone knows where Colorado Springs is, right, in Colorado. And then next to Colorado Springs is Manitou Springs. Really awesome little city. Uh, they've got the Manitou Springs incline and all sorts of amazing things to do, hiking and nature. And they have what, the Manitou Springs cave dwellings, which – and this really – this is an awesome story because it really puts life in perspective, talking about needs and wants. So the Manitou Springs cave dwellings are – like caveman caves built into the side of a mountain that are still in existence and you can tour them. Okay. And it, it's incredible and they're very well preserved and you can take a tour and you walk into, I mean, my office is probably, I believe it's like maybe 14 by 12. You're, you're standing in like a six by six, seven by seven at the <laughs> most, you know, with, with a dirt floor and the ceiling's maybe eight feet high. And that's that's it. Yep. And there's a little sign that says, like, a family of four lived in this cave. In this little, this little, the size of a powder room. Yep. And and then you can go into another part of the cave dwellings where it's like multi um, st stories, different stories. So they have that little six by six, seven by seven room. And then there's a ladder made of wood, like a handmade ladder, right, that... That goes, that goes up like four stories worth of little cave dwellings. And you can climb up the ladder and then you're in another six by six or seven by seven little room with a huge hole in the middle of the floor where the ladder is. And in each one of those three or four stories, another family lived. So not only are they living there, they're living there with a big hole in the middle of the floor that hopefully you don't fall through. Okay. And I'm like, so if you were on the top floor, 
you know, and you have to go to the bathroom. Like you're going down other inter, other families. Like you go like, and so people used to, and they had to walk to the you know river to get their water. And so a whole family used to live in basically the size of a closet. Yep. In most people's houses. And that was all they needed because that was what was available at the time. So after we we went there, it was just like, I, wow. Like it was just mind blowing to really see what people used to need and get by on. And so now when people talk about needs and wants, right? And maybe you have someone who um, has a salaried position, a nine to five job making 40, 50, 60 grand a year. And they might look at someone like you or someone like me or a successful business person and take their own fear of going after the life that they want and say, oh, you don't need the six figures, these seven figures. You don't need that car. You don't need that house. It's ludicrous. It's like, well, you don't need that 1,300 square foot apartment. You don't need that phone. You don't need that pair of shoes. Like you still have it, right? It's, it's all relative. Yeah, it's all I mean, relative. And so surrounding yourself with people that support your vision especially at any stage of entrepreneurship, but especially to get to that level, because the higher you go, the less people <laughs> there are. And I know for me, like you, it's no coincidence that last year I spent over a quarter million dollars just on business expenses, on travel, on education. And so I want to be an eight figure earner. I'm not at the eight figure mark yet, but I want to be. And so I'm like, well, I need to be in the room with as many eight and nine figure people as possible. And it's, I need to think how they think, right? And, and, and get their motivation. And, and it's no coincidence that in that year, I've had the most growth in business and personal development and income than ever. But you got to surround yourself with people like that. So as, you, as you've scaled your sales academy, like what, what type of events or, or education are you surrounding yourself with to keep growing? So master, so number one, I read every single day. Um, we have a hell of a routine every single day that we do. So I'm a big, and books are not expensive. So I read every single day, but we have, th we do have three coaches. We have a coaching coach. We have a business coach. We have a mindset coach. Mm -hmm. Um, actually we have like two mindset coaches slash and one, one's up. So we actually have four coaches. So we do that. Um, yeah, we spend over six figures a year just in coaches. Yeah. Um, and then masterminds is something that we typically try to invest in. Like, mm -hmm. like what you're saying, um, the very first big mastermind we ever invested in was two years ago and you had to at least make, so bring home at least a half a million a year. Wow. And, uh, we did that and we got into a room with multiple six figure earners and seven figure earners. Mm -hmm. Um, and that was an eye opener for us, like you're saying, because birds of a feather flock together, man. Yeah. So it's um, and learning like when you learn from because it, it's a jump from six to seven. Great. And then it's another jump from seven to eight. So mm -hmm. being able to get into a room with people that have been in your situation, ask them questions, even though they may not be in the exact business, they more than likely have went through similar struggles. OK, just like just like us, like I want to share what we're going through right now, because we, even though we just had the best year ever, we decided to redeploy that. And we started last year, we are redeploying into the business to build a wider foundation. So mm -hmm. we're going back and we are crushing everything we had that wasn't working well. We're partnering with new people. We're bringing on a new team. We're redoing the processes mm -hmm. to build a wider foundation so we can build it. So we're taking us what I consider a step or two back maybe financially, okay, to be able to 10x the business over the next 24 to 36 months, which is what it takes to be able to get to that next level, I believe. Mm -hmm. So um, I'd love to jump back on in 18 or 24 months man, and be like, be oh yeah, man, we did this <laughs> right. But that's what, we're in the shit stage right now. We're in the yeah. stage that nobody likes. You don't, this is the part that is not fun. This is the part that no one likes to talk about. You never mm -hmm. hear anyone talking about it. Like mm -hmm. on social media, you see everybody's best day, but you got, just like you were saying it, you got to go through the, the shit sometimes to get to greener pastures. And I, I feel like that's what we're, I feel like we are just barely going, <laughs> like we take a yeah. step and we sink in three foot of mud and we take yeah. another step. <laughs> so, but it's fun, man. It's, it's, it's built, it's, it's made us better business owners and leaders, which have made us better coaches as well. Yeah. Yeah, man. I love that. What, what are some things that you do techniques or just things that you do? When I know I have some of mine, like when you're feeling, man, this, I'm going through a season right now. I'm having a hard day. It's mm -hmm. some days you feel super, you're in it. Some days you're not, you do it, you do what has to be done anyway. But 
some days you're you're not as motivated as others. You're not as excited. You don't have as, as much electricity thrown through your veins as others. What are some things that you do yeah. to on those days, in those moments, when you're not feeling it, what do yep. you do to push forward as positively as possible? I just sit on the couch and eat Cheetos. And- <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, some days that's what I wish, but no. Yeah. Um, so my morning routine is extremely important to me. Um, even on the days I'm not feeling it, I have non-negotiables that I do every single day. So I do a 12 minute workout daily. Um, I sit in the sauna, meditate, prayer, I am exercise, and I read a book. So those are like my non-negotiables. If I don't do that, I'm not the same person. And that's what helps me push through. I would tell you that also on the days that are just, you're not feeling it. Um, I will take more breaks and I will turn on music and just like get good vibes going. Like right before this podcast, dude, yeah. like if you just saw me, I had the music blare and like oh, I was yeah. dancing yeah, yeah. Um, because it's been a long day today and I'm like hit my face. I'm like, I need a cold, <laughs> yeah. I need a cold water plunge right, right now. I need a cold shower right now, something. And so that's what, that's just what I do. Like I try to, I try to make sure I, I do my non-negotiable morning routine. Cause I know how good that makes me feel. I don't like every, I don't necessarily like love everything in my routine, but I love how it makes me feel. And so that's a non-negotiable for me. And then typically like good, good beats to get me through the day, man. Like if, yeah. if it's a, if it's a rough day, I'm going to turn on some good, good vibe music and mm-hmm. vibe out. Man, that's awesome. Music is incredible, isn't it? Just the way it can make you feel, you know, if you ever watch TV and imagine or a movie and there's something going on and you just imagine what would be going on if there was no music right now, or you just mute it for a second it's totally, yep. you know, as someone who's in the music business, a bit of a tangent, but it's just amazing how the emotion, the emotions music, um, can trigger. Oh yeah. Like, and I, and I haven't always mm. been that way. Honestly, my wife is like the big music person. Like she mm. loves it. And so I've actually learned this from her along the way. And it just, it is amazing what happens when you got like some of your favorite upbeat songs yeah. going on just to get you in the mood, man. And yeah. so that's, yeah, to, I, I don't know if that answers your question, but that's what I do. On yeah, the no, days. That's cool. I'm, I'm always intrigued to hear about it. You know, I have a, <clears throat> a morning routine of my own. Um, and that, you know, that helps, but sometimes it's, uh, you just get in this funk or, or a rough phone call or something doesn't go the way you thought it was. One of the things I do, I did this actually earlier today. I'll w- usually work out five days a week in the gym lifting. And then the other days I'll take a walk. I have a 40 pound weighted vest I wear. So I did that today for about 45 minutes and I will talk to myself as if I am coaching myself. Yep. And, or, or I imagine I'm, receiving information from my future self years from now that I have inevitably accomplished whatever it is I'm stressing about right now. How would my future self talk to me about that? Alex Hermosi talks about that all the time, right? How would your, I think he says like, how would your 80 year old self talk to you right now? Right. Um, and that, that's really helpful. That's that. I I don't know why for me that really works, but it's gotta be talking out loud. And I found there's a difference even if I'm struggling with something, there's something I don't want to do. I will literally say out loud, Rob, what's going to happen if you don't do this thing, right? This isn't going to get done for you. What are you doing this for? If you're not going to get in there and do what needs to be done, you know, stop messing around and let's go. The the, the, saying things out loud is just something that's real helpful for me. It's something I coach my students on too. If they don't want to prospect, they don't want to cold call. They're not feeling motivated. Say out loud, what's going to happen if I don't do this thing? right now. If I don't do this thing, I am going further away from my goals. For the listeners, I guarantee you, if you say that out loud, you are going to do whatever it is you're yeah. battling with yourself right now. Well, yeah, man. And you're, yeah, positive self-talk, coaching yourself. Um, and I'll, I'll share another thing that Courtney and I are going through right now, man. Like we work from home. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've always been entrepreneurs, so we've never had any set schedules. Mm-hmm. And so what we would do <clears throat> is we would we're all in on everything we do so if we're if we're working we're all in we're working till eight o'clock at night like every night and then we would go and then we would travel we travel three months a year but on travel we don't really work so we're either travel so we had no boundaries all right and so one thing we're going through right now that maybe 
could possibly help some of your listeners that may not have boundaries. Maybe they're struggling like what you're saying, like, I just don't feel it. So in, we're in the first four days. This is the first four days of this journey, all right? We're doing it for the next 90 days, but we're giving ourselves a shut off time. So we are shutting off at five o'clock mm. every night, mm -hmm. which is gives me anxiety, all right? Gives me, <laughs> but it's it's causing us to be super intentional with our yeah. time, super efficient with our time, learn how to delegate and empower our team even more mm -hmm. and learning how to say no to the things that we were saying yes to prior. Mm -hmm. And by shutting off at five o'clock, and again, I'm only three and a half, four days in, this is the fourth day, but it is actually almost releasing to me to be like, okay, we're done. I don't think about anything past five o'clock. I've been sleeping. I've had the best night to sleep I've had in probably a long time mm. because used to, I would just not shut it off because I would check, I would check my work email before I went to bed or I would yep. check my next day. Yep. And so I know this is a little off topic, but if you feel like you're getting burnout or if you feel like man, this can't be how it is. Like I believe in sacrifice. I sacrificed a lot. I believe in hard work, mm -hmm. but giving yourself intentional boundaries to be as effective and intentional as possible may also be really helpful for you if you're struggling with that. Oh yeah. That's awesome. Um, <clears throat> I was the same before we had our, our first child uh, about a year and a half ago, late nights, super common, Katie, same thing. Uh, just always, always on. Once our family expanded, then it, then it, things really changed, and I had to be much more intentional about instilling that five five thirty window of just shutting it down. It can't happen all the time in the season I'm in of growing and scaling certain aspects of the business, but most of the time I really make an effort to do that. And the thing is, that that's where it goes back to circling back to what we said earlier. There is a choice where you have to choose like time, or or money, or work. But when you say yes to one thing, you always say no to something else. And that was a really big realization for me. Like if I say yes to this client, if I say yes to picking up the phone at this time, if I say yes to checking my email after working hours, then I'm saying no to being present with my family. And that's something that's really struck, uh, has been a struggle for me as well. I, um, I'm part of an incredible mastermind called the King's Brotherhood. It's an amazing all men's mastermind. And uh, obviously I'm a, Huge fan of women entrepreneurship, but being part of an all men's mastermind is great to be able to, because just as women have women's groups for to talk about the things, the struggles and thoughts that women have, men have struggles and, and things and stress of our own as, uh, as heads of the family. And it was interesting that a lot of guys, because when I joined this group about six months ago, I was in a really rough spot of trying to figure out just how to balance work and family and is very, very challenging. And I wasn't the only, the only man in the room that, that had this instance of, you know, in an effort to build something for your family, you can wind up like, like disconnecting from them a little bit because of the yep. time it takes. You know, I, I think work life balance is a myth. I think, you go uh, to a certain point. I think you go through seasons of like when you're scaling something, like you said, like when you were younger, just crushing it all night. Right. I think now you're in a good spot to be able to shut it down at five o'clock. Right. But, but when you were building your business, yep. you couldn't shut it down at five o'clock. It takes time and attention to build something. But then you get to that point where you can dial back if you want to, and you really have to ask yourself, like, is this really necessary for me to continue this grind? Or is it possible for me to instill some more balance in my life? Well, and it's me and Courtney were just talking about this. It's like, mm. could, could we have had this schedule when we were, and I don't know if we could, because mm. now, now this is still intense. Cause I love what I do. I can work. I yeah. can freaking work because we're not going to work weekends either this is right. crazy dude right. like monday through friday only Yo, five let's five, go no weekends. <laughs> dude it's like i i'm like it's not easy like the other night i cheated i was i checked email at like eight o'clock i'm like what am i doing it was just habit <laughs> but where i was going here is is after so this is the decision we have made we have we have chose to deploy our money to buy more time. Yes. So we have, and so we believe wholeheartedly again. So even though we're now have a better work life balance, 
we believe that by doing what we're doing, it's going to teach us to be better entrepreneurs, better business owners, better leaders, better coaches. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, we are going to deploy our money to those folks and empower our team that can help take our business to the next level. Because we've gotten it to where we can get it today, right. but we can't continue to do the same thing and expect a different result. And so right. we're going all in on empowering um, our team, deploying our money, again, taking maybe a, a minor step or two backwards financially mm -hmm. to invest in getting great people, great alliances, great yeah. network to hopefully take our business yeah. to the next level. That's amazing. I love that, man. I love that. And I know, I know circling back to what you said a moment ago for me personally, <clears throat> I had to get my real estate career as a sales agent to a certain point Yes. to where I had enough money from, you know, if a few years of just crushing it as, as a, as an agent, to have enough money to be able to then dial back, to be able to then buy more time, to be able to hire an assistant, to then when I started my most recent business of coaching and writing and sales courses, that was the first business where I had the, I'm gonna use money to make money. I'm not gonna bootstrap this. I'm gonna spend over six figures, you know, starting this business to, to remodel my studio, to hire a marketing company, to hire a marketing coach, to hire a content manager and a content creator and a full-time video editor and make the best sales course ever for real estate agents. Like I just went all in and, but, but I had to get to a certain point and I know for sure starting a career as a real estate agent, the reason my sales course is called earth to orbit is because I liken starting a real estate career or any career really in the entrepreneurial world as launching a rocket into space. It's hard. It's the hardest part of the journey. It takes the most amount of energy, the most amount of calculation. Most things can go wrong. If it goes wrong, it's catastrophic. But if you can make it work and get into orbit and, 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 and now you're in Earth's orbit and you're just, you got your systems going and your referrals going and your team going and then it's just a, a smooth machine that's bringing in the money, that is where you're going to. But you can't yep. get there without going 17,800 miles an hour, right? And and so I know that we had to work seven days a week for six months to get those, those deals, first deals closed and to build our network in a new city where we didn't know oh, anyone, yeah. but, but it doesn't have to be forever. And, yep. and I, I think like it, it, it goes up and then you reach to a certain point and then you go down, but to rebound yourself back up. So yes, you take a step back financially. I'm in that season as well. I took out a fat home equity loan to use as a <laughs> business loan. Because I knew, hey, I'm going to get this business up and running. I'm going to start stepping out of sales a little bit and stepping more into coaching. And I'm going to be investing. It's going to take some time to be profitable. And we're starting to turn that. We're starting to turn to the other side now, right? We're coming around the dark side of the moon and, and we're coming yep. back. Uh, but it takes time. But again, if you have the right coach and you have the faith in yourself and you make these calculated decisions and you're willing to do what most people aren't, that's really where the reward is. And and I have no doubt that you will get there. I mean, you're, it's, you know, from the outside observer to look at what you're doing with the Weaver Sales Academy would say you're already there. But as someone who's in it, like you are, I know exactly what you're talking about to say, well, yeah, it's easy to say that from the outside perspective, but we know where we're going. We have so many more people we can serve and so many more levels to go. And I have, I have no doubt you're going to get there. Man, we're... Uh... It's just a journey, dude, as yeah. you know, like we're, <laughs> we're, we're super pumped. And, and that's just it. Like it's, uh, it's how can we affect, how can we grow new networks? How can we meet people like yourself, um, to where we can just give others the confidence and teach them as well, like how to have the career they want, the personal life they want, the time they want, make the money they want, have the yeah. freedom they want. That's what it's all about, man. Because, um, yeah, again, you only have a certain amount of time here on this world, so you better yeah. make the most out of it. So that's absolutely right. So, uh, Michael, I'm going to have one more question for you, but before we do that, let me ask if there are any people, any listeners in the insurance space, or maybe they want to get into the insurance space and they want to align with your Academy, because obviously, you know, I'm all about the blueprint with the impossible to fail framework. And if you're looking for the blueprint on being in the insurance world, well, this is it. I mean, they, this is the, the mirror curriculum of what I do with real estate. They, you, you've got insurance college you know, 101 yep. to 501, right? You've got it all. And so how can people align with the Weaver Sales Academy? 
Yeah, super easy, man. So number one, I would say follow us for sure. So uh, Michael and Courtney Weaver, we're on any social media platform you can think of. We're always providing a ton of free value, free content. Check that out. Um, we have a podcast called The Insurance Buzz. Um, and then again, our company's Weaver Sales Academy. So you can Google it, weaversa.com. Um, I'll give you my personal sell. And this is even for anybody out there, whatever. If you need help, if, if I can help you in any way, uh, my cell is 816-263-1412. Feel free to reach out. I'm always happy to help any way I can. Man, that... <laughs> It's amazing, dude. Look at that. Inside access here, impossible to fail. Oh, man. <laughs> Look, here's the thing, though. 99% of people won't do anything with it. Like, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I, give, I give out my cell phone all the time, and I can tell you a few people have reached out. So maybe I'm, maybe I, maybe I'm just not a good guess. I don't know. But <laughs> anyways, I'm, I'm giving out. I'm willing to help any way I can. Yeah. No, you're right. Most people won't take advantage of it. But for the ones that yeah. do... The Weaver Sales Academy, Michael Weaver, I mean, genuine article, the real deal, worked his way up from the ground up, started an incredible company, and really has a servant's heart. It's just amazing. Michael, one last question for you. If you were to give our listeners some advice that they were to implement, because remember, gang, knowledge without implementation is useless. So if you were going to give our listeners some advice that would make it impossible to fail, what is that advice? Yeah, invest in yourself. It's something we've been talking about the whole time. Hire a freaking coach, go on YouTube. I, I prefer, okay, so there's lots of free resources out there, but invest in yourself, actually pay money because that will tie you to something. Invest in a coach. Yep. Again, I know I said this earlier in the episode, but the more you can invest in yourself, the more you can learn. Mm -hmm. That's something that no one ever can take away from you You can lose your car. You can lose your house. You can lose everything, but you can't, you can't lose your knowledge. You can't lose your wisdom. Yeah, man. Absolutely. hundred percent. Right. And I agree with you. I actually had a YouTube video released a little while ago talking about the importance of spending money on education, not free yep. stuff. People don't value free stuff. There's, there's a trigger that happens when you spend money, you're more invested. And when you spend more money on people that are worth it, and you spend $5,000 to go to a place for a weekend to learn and be in the room with those people, man, there's an incredible thing that happens, not just because of the money you're spending, but because of the people that you get access to. Because when you're spending that kind of money, you're, you're getting access to people that are the type of people that you want to emulate. <laughs> and that's where you learn those thoughts, that thought process. And just absolutely fantastic session with Michael Weaver of the Weaver Sales Academy. Check him out at weaversa.com. Follow him and Courtney on social media. Michael, thank you so much for being here today, bro. Hey, thanks, brother. I appreciate you. Absolutely, man.